Cliff Quick Test QT1 and Hoppy HP9800. Hello and welcome to Paul McGee Electronics. I'm Paul. <laughs> Apologies for the cluttered state of my bench today. Uh, I've been working on a few projects all at once, so it's kind of got a bit cluttered. Hopefully, the next video it'll be a bit tidier. This is to introduce you to, if you're not familiar with them already through BigClive.com, two pieces of useful test equipment for anyone testing anything electronic or electrical. Now I must stress one of these items is not to be used for permanent connections at all. The second item if you want to leave it permanently plugged in that's up to you but I wouldn't advise it. Right so I'll get on with the first item which I did have a moment ago, that's bad planning on my part uh, here we go. So the first piece of equipment in question, you'll recognise this if you're familiar with BigClive.com and John Ward. This is the Cliff Quick Test QT1. And it's essentially all it is is these. If you want to see what's inside one of these, uh, BigClive.com there is the place to look to find out what's in there. See, he has took his to pieces. His is a slightly older model than this. This is a new one. There's a fuse in the lid. Those are the contacts. Neon indicator show the power's on. That's where the wires will connect. And the power isn't applied until... Close the lid. And I can actually demonstrate this. Safely, of course. Because with electricity, safety is everything. Otherwise it could get quite nasty. This is protected by a 13 amp fuse, I must stress, but the load that I'm about to connect up isn't really something I would want to use with a 13 amp fuse. And it is, when I get this thing to stay on the bench, there we go. It's light socket, which I've not fitted a plug to, and all I'm planning on doing with that is just connecting it to that, just to test a lamp quickly, and that's it. That's a standard 60 watt tungsten lamp. It's a bit a bit old obviously because you can't actually get tungsten lamps these days apart from the decorative ones. So what you would do is you would connect the neutral to the blue, live to the brown or whatever colours they happen to be in your country. In most of Europe that's what they are. You can see the lamp is not lit. But the second I put this lid down, I'll swamp the camera out, why don't I? That's the lamp lit. And to disconnect the power, put the lid up. Simple as that. I'm just going to unplug that now because we don't need it for the moment. So that's the Cliff Quick Test QT1. And I must stress, it's not an excuse just to cut your plugs off and stick wires into into the mains. Please don't do that. I would not advise you do that. You can get these from uh, most electronics, re electronics electrical suppliers, uh, Rapid Electronics in the UK, it's where I got this one from. Um, and uh, the cord which I've got on it's 1.5 mil square so it's will handle the 13 amps comfortably which is what that's rated to. Don't try putting anything slightly higher through it. And I do believe it's available in the American colours as well. So, moving on, I'll just put this light bulb somewhere where it's not going to set fire to anything. Oh, it's cooled down now. Excellent. So I'll put the light bulb back on the desk for the moment and bring in exhibit number two. Another one, if you are familiar with BigClive.com. And it is... I'm going to untangle the wires. That's just one cable, actually. This... This is the Hoppy HP9800 power meter. It w did come with rather dodgy speaker terminals on it, but I've removed them because they're rather dodgy and they were fouled on UK 3-pin plugs with cable coming out like that. The Clive and BigClive.com hasn't actually taken them off. And that is the terminal speaker terminals that were on the Hoppy. These aren't rated to mains voltage, so... If you, if you really aren't planning on using them, just take them off. Just in case it's taking the back cover off, which exposes live electrical connections. 
well, maybe not exposing live electrical connections at the moment because it's switched off. So just take that back cover out and desolder the wires. Okay, I'm going to plug this in now. The hoppy. There we go. Oh, whoa. And yeah. Just as flickery as it would be on bigclive.com, but actually, I think that's not as flickery. It's because it's got a multiplexing display, nothing you can do about that. Clive probably has explained this. Death adapter style plug. The button. There. I'm not going to go through that. If you just press it, it does various different things. For example, if you press it, it would do that. If you press and hold it, it does that. Although I like to keep it on an annual power consumption, which is the default. Yeah, so it basically tells you current being drawn, power factor, line voltage, line frequency, which I put frequency in there, I don't actually understand why. Chinese probably. Power in watts and how much it would cost to run. So it's mainly aimed at testing lamps. Um, let's see if I've got anything I can plug into that. Put that down a moment. Try and keep it in shot. Um, do I have anything I can plug in? Um, oh, something I can plug into it. Um, bearing in mind that is on a th that extension leads also protected to 13, 13 amps of, of the plug on for its cord. I'm not sure I can really push it that far. Um, let's see if I'm finding something. Um, most of the stuff I'm looking at. Um, I'll just use the lamp again. <laughs> just use the lamp. <laughs> I'd rather not use the lamp, but let's just use the lamp. So, I'm just going to put the lamp back onto the quick test, which I was hoping not to do that, but you know. Uh, this is actually much safer than the speaker terminals on the Hoppy anyway, because the connections are well and truly shrouded. And so I'm just doing the quick test off camera. I'm just going to pop that there. Um, oh, I've got that light bulb tangled with the quick test zone flex, which is really annoying. Uh, yeah. Yeah, these things happen when you're filming for YouTube, don't they? Oh, I'm sorry. So, not something I really wanted to. To do that, put the quick test back up there. It should be fine there, it's not going to cause a problem. And I'll plug it into the hoppy. Yep, swamp out again. So the lid on the quick test is down so the light bulb's lit up. Uh, you could probably just see the quick test off to the corner there. So this tells me that that bulb, let's move it out of the way so you can see the display. Ooh. Uh, that bulb is pulling 243 milliamps. Unity power factor, that's a power factor of 1. The voltage is 258, 235.8, sorry. Um, frequency is 49.99 hertz, which is 50 hertz in this country. This bulb is 57.5 watts. It's a 60 watt light bulb. And apparently, according to this, in a year it would probably, unless I've changed the setting there, not realised I've done it, it would. It would um, uh, cost uh, 20, 20 kilowatt hours to run just this little light bulb. Let's try and bring that in so you can see. Yeah, so that's the that's the light bulb. Whoops, swamping things out again. And that's that's the Hoppy's display, which is really, which I, it actually does flicker a bit. No wonder Clive calls it the flickery Hoppy. Let's turn that lamp off. Like so, and disconnect that. <laughs> okay. Trying to blind you anymore. Ow. That lamp is going to be hot again. Yeah, so the Hoppy, uh, that's available from e on eBay or Banggood or AliExpress for about well somewhere between about between about thirty and fifty fifty pounds. But beware that you might get hit with them uh, with them a uh, customs charge to pay. Uh, they did actually get me, but having said that, um, since August of this year, Border Force don't seem to like me very much, and it's them who actually act on behalf of Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs and slap the charges on. I'm not going to explain why Border Force don't particularly like me very much, but, you know, because I don't think they do. I've come to that conclusion since, since, 
since Aug since it was well, the end of August. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but Border Force are complete and utter morons, and they're just well, they're just jobs worth at the end of the day. They're just out there to make a buck, and I think around about Christmas time they're doing what traffic wardens do as well, and that's um. Uh, just get everybody they can. Yeah, the traffic warden got me as well the other week outside my work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, border force and traffic wardens. All horrible people. Stop people going about their lives in a civilised manner. So, the border force delayed me getting this. And uh, the traffic warden gave me a £35 parking ticket. So I had to pay £35 plus... £11, not all of that went to HMRC, some of that went to Royal Mail for handling charges, but it's okay, I don't mind them doing that. So I'll take the hobby off now. Yeah, so, just at the end of the day, when you buy a, one of these hoppy meters, just be careful. And also, if you've got any sense, take the speaker terminals off, unless you have a real need to keep them on, because they foul the UK plugs, and they're not electrically safe, in my opinion. So, it's a Hobby 9800, HP 9800, and a Cliff Quick Test QT1. Now, again, I'm going to stress with a Cliff Quick Test. It's really only intended for testing. Now, the reason I bought this is over on the shelves over there. I have a an, an old Heathkit um, uh, valve voltmeter, which I actually do want to restore and get working, but it's got a non-compliant plug on it. And uh, I would like to connect this thing up to maybe a a variac or an auto transformer or something just to protect the thing or and protect myself if I can get an isolation transformer the variac would be good because then I could just turn the power up slowly and then I wouldn't have to dedicate a, a socket and it needs a new flex on it anyway so I'd probably have to rewire it so I probably will be starting the res restoration when I can get hold of some valves for that so, uh, the hoppy well, that's going to be making some very frequent appearances, all being well. Uh, probably not as frequent as Big Clive. Because he has it on pretty much most of his videos that involve lamps or, well, anything plugged in. Mm, yeah. He gets around the plug problem sometimes by just stuffing a death adapter in there. With the death adapter socket itself on there. If <laughs> have a look. And I have heard in America the live and neutral are actually rever reversed from what they should be. So, it does work on American supplies, it is rated for them, so... It's actually rated as for the 100 volts used in Japan, so it, it works worldwide. The Click Quick Test also works worldwide, because it is available in colours for other countries. And it's also available as a free phase variant as well, I've noticed, but I haven't really got use for that. So I don't tend to go anywhere near anything that's three phase. So two useful bits of equipment. The hoppy, as I say, you can get it from China. Just watch out because you might get stung with the customs charge, which I did. That was a uh, that was um, uh, eleven pounds. Um, uh, I had to pay much. Like I said. Some of it went to Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, some of it went to Royal Mail. Um, it was already at the sorting office before they said, hey, you had to pay. So it was already close close by, so I knew it was going to get delivered. And when they delivered it, they left it in the hallway, which is a bit naughty of them, but that's okay. At least I got it. At least it's there. And one other thing about this particular unit came with that plug on it. Now that's no good in this country, and thought let's just put a proper UK compliant plug on it so that was snipped off so that can be plugged into the hoppy unfortunately and possibly deliver an electric shock if you're dumb enough to do that so I'll have to get rid of that uh, one other thing comes with accessories so we have this lamp holder which is you probably hear this already uh, Edison screw lamp holder it comes with this little adapter, which is Edison screw to small Edison screw, which screws into the lamp holder, and it comes with another adapter, which is converts to Edison screw to a GU10. I can actually use that in my bedside lamp if I wanted. 
because I've got an Edison screw to bend a cap adapter in there. Okay, so I'll pop them there. And then it also came with this bizarre set of wires, which I suspect is what the speaker terminals were for. But I don't think I'm ever going to use this, and that wire doesn't look as though it's mains rated. Yeah, that looks like bell wire. I wouldn't use that on 240 volts. I'd probably use it on 12 volts. That's fine for testing 12 volt lamps, but not. it says on the terminals that they're rated at 1 amp 250 volts, but really, would you want to connect them across the mains? I certainly wouldn't. This also has a two pin Chinese plug on it, as many of these things do. Uh, da, 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 da. Rated to 10 amps at 250 volts, though. To be honest, I don't think that that is, plug is rated anywhere near what it claims. I don't trust Chinese plugs as far as I can throw them. So, I might take that plug off and stick a, either stick a compliant one on or just strip the ends and use that with a quick test as well. Because it's because I'm all all I'll use that for is testing because you can't exactly hang it up or anything. It's just a it's just a test lamp lamp holder. That's all it's for. Hmm. So if you want one of those, as I said, well, I got mine from AliExpress, uh, and just be aware of the customer charge from the that the jobs worth at Border Force like to slap on things. Well, they clearly don't like me very much anymore because. Everything else I got from China didn't get didn't get them a didn't get them a slap slap with a customs charge. This is the first thing that did. Oh, I was thinking about that. Um, yeah. So it's that thing's also a little bit safer than just shoving one of these in into the mains because if you get it wrong, you might either get an electric shock or you might blow your meter up. This meter is rated. Up to up to twenty amps AC, M much like the Hoppy. But to be honest, the Hoppy is probably going to be the better way to do this, rather than multimeter. And I kind of like this multimeter. This multimeter is my favourite, and you know, it's always my favourite that multimeter. And I don't want to blow it up, <laughs> so that's hence the Hoppy. I could have got another one. Uh, John John Ward has something similar, which has a colour display on it. But it's in a little black desk mount box. But I liked the hoppy because you know the hop the hoppy just looks looks the part and it's handheld. And just one final note about the hoppy. This case might look familiar to you if you're an amateur radio operator, which I am actually. So if you want to see my amateur radio channel as well, I do have one. Just search, search for my call sign. Well, my name and my call sign actually. So. Be my name and Mike Zero Whiskey November Uniform M Zero W N U. So if you want to search for that, you can do. I've got I've got more subscribers there than I have here at the, at the time of filming, which which is interesting. So anyway, anyway, so I'm just going on a bit of a diversion there. So if you're an amateur radio operator, you'll notice this looks very similar case. Actually, it's the same case because quite possibly to the rig expert series of antenna analyzers. It's essentially the same case. Which is why there's a battery compartment on the Hoppy that exposes live electrical connections. <laughs> and if you want to see inside the Hoppy, go on to BigClive.com's channel and search for Inside the Hoppy Power Meter. You'll be quite surprised as actually what's in there. And also, note Clive's surprise when he dis actually discovers there's a button on it. Because <laughs> he didn't even know that button was there. Uh, well, I didn't actually either. I didn't really pay attention to that until I started looking into actually buying a hoppy for myself. Uh, and then there's two versions of it, one with USB connectivity, one without. That's without because I don't need the USB part. Okay. And um, I'm just going to close the video on a final note. That yellow plug in there is because... People will probably ask me anyway at some point. Is the ESD bonding plug for my anti-static mat on the desk? It's not connected at the moment because I've had to bring the extension lead up. So I'm going to put the extension lead back down on the floor now because that's where it goes. So I can plug my soldering iron into that. So, yeah. So let's bring in the other one. And we'll end the video. I'll just...
put the plug out of the way and bring it in. So we have, is it still in shot? Uh, just move it across a little. There we go. So the Cliff Quick Test QT1, the Hoppy HP 9800. If you're familiar with Big Clive's channel, you'll have, you'll already know what they are, and if not, have a nosy because you'll be able to find out what's inside both of them on his channel. And if and don't forget to like, subscribe, and whatever else them uh, you have to do, uh, both on this channel and also I recommend Big Clive's channel because he he finds some really dangerous stuff from China. <laughs> And he draws schematics out and everything, so yeah, I recommend him. I'm subscribed to him myself. So so yeah. Like and subscribe my channel, don't forget, and also go do go do the same for Big Clive. I would I would advise it because he's entertaining and he's got he's got a load of stories to tell as well about about his um, uh, about his life and his different jobs as well. So yeah. Yeah, he's got he's got a website with some projects on it, but you know, you can look at his his um, uh, YouTube videos. <laughs> some of them are quite in entertaining and amusing in their own way. But I suppose that's how he's so popular. Ah, so I'm just going back off topic again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you probably noticed I actually actually am. I'm a bit of a fan of BigClive.com. It's one of my favourite YouTube electronics channels. In fact, it is my favourite one. <laughs> Which is what, partly what inspired me to get back into electronics again. And, of course, and the amateur radio aspect as well. So don't forget to have a look at my amateur radio channel as well. I might pop a link to that one in as well. So, so these are f widely available. Quick test. If you're in a country that uses different colouring for the wires, like... Uh, America and Canada. Um, you can get the quick test in those colours. I can't remember the actual model number for it, but I believe it's still a QT1 if it's got the neon indicator in it. Um, and the prices should be roughly similar. Uh, the Hoppy is available on most of the Chinese outlets. So, And again, if you don't like the speaker terminals on the Hoppy, take them off. That's why I did, because, you know, I just, I don't like them. I didn't think they were electrically sound, and they go in the way of all the plugs, because all my plugs are UK plugs. I don't really have any... U well, I do have a couple of Euro ones on some radio gear. But otherwise, they're all UK, UK plugs. So, this is Paul for Paul McGee Electronics, signing off before I ramble on anymore. <laughs> and I'll put links to the videos where Big Clive takes apart the quick test and the hoppy so you can actually see what's inside them uh, so that's not something I'm going to do because it's already been done and I'll see you in the next one don't forget to subscribe to Paul McGee Electronics and ring the bell if you'd like to be notified about new videos as I upload them until the next one